Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me with artist Carol Hammerman in her studio. Hi, Carol. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you very much for joining me and for exhibiting in our first virtual show. This is our seventh year anniversary, and you also have been an Evanston made group show participant for many, many years. So thank you for your loyalty. <laughs> I tell us what was in the show. Tell us what you're exhibiting in the show and the pop up. I am exhibiting a sculpture in the show. Um, pretty much because I am a sculptor and then the jewelry kind of came like in the last five, six years. So I've been a sculptor for most of my adult life or an artist, I guess, not, not a sculptor. Um, you know, between the BFA and the MFA, I've kind of developed my own aesthetic and then I just apply it to jewelry. So I've done a, and it's actually behind me. I can't quite, it's behind me. I love me. that. I love the wall. It's a, um, with the, with the uh, wood circle with the inset. And um, it's my COVID piece. I, the uh, collage in back is I read the New York Times probably too thoroughly. And so I cut out the graphs because I'm a visual person and I cut out uh, a lot of stuff. So I have like a crazy amount of resource material that I play with a long time just to kind of, to get the right aesthetic. You read the New York Times daily or just weekly? I do. We, we still get that. My husband wants to always get the paper. Wow. The not read it on time. Nice. And then you incorporate that into your work. That's what's in the group show. What is in the pop-up shop? The pop-up shop, I just put my, gal my jewelry. Um, okay. My jewelry used to be a way of kind of taking a break from the conceptual side of sculpture. And then the other thing I really embraced was I got to learn something new. So I got to learn metal smithing for my friends. Uh, we all teach at Columbia College, so I could go to their classes and use their facility. And that kind of, I kind of got hooked. So when I told one of them that I was um, getting obsessed with making this stuff and I was spending way too much time, she said, that's great. <laughs> so, you know, the bottom line is I like making it. It's a nice break from sculpture because sculpture is a lot, a, much more cerebral. And you, you toggle back and forth between the two. Until the COVID, I was very good at going back and forth. I'm not very good at going back and forth. Now I'm stuck. I'm sticking with the uh, COVID. I'm sticking with the... Uh, right. So let's talk about that. What is the switch that happened that made jewelry either more difficult or the sculpture more attractive? I just wasn't interested in making jewelry. I wasn't interested in having fun. <laughs> I needed to do something for a purpose. And the purpose is um, for me to do, you know, it's hard to give back with all the times that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of on the older side. I can't march. I can't, you know, do a lot of those things. So I just stay home. This is my, the reason I like being down here, it's kind of my space. Mm -hmm. And it's the same day and night, and it's got all my stuff, um, minus the computer. The computer's new today for Zoom. <laughs> but, you know, I, and I used to listen to NPR a lot in my studio, and I had to stop listening. Yeah, interesting. And you, but you're making time to keep your practice very consistent. You're in the studio every day. I, but I always have. I have always juggled it with teaching and working, and I've always maintained a studio. It kept getting smaller over the years. Uh -huh. You know, when I was single, it was this big. <laughs> then and I got married, and we had a building, it was this big, and then we had children, and it got this big. So it's like Great. kind of out of room. And now it's a nice big space again. Mm. No, this is the smallest one I've had. Really? Yes. It is. Oh, I have seen your studio and I think it's kind of big. That's impressive. You must have had a huge for, um, a home here. But um, I used to live in an apartment building in the city and um, I used to date the landlord. So he gave me this huge basement space. Nice. Huge. There are benefits to dating the landlord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Um, okay, so how are you doing without the in-people activity? How is the online part of Shelter In affecting you? It's okay. Um, uh, one of the things that was a little hard for me, I'm used to being alone during the day. I'm married, and he used to go to work, and he stopped going to work. 
So today is day two of him finally going back to his office. Oh, wow. And I literally, I don't have to hear his music or his Zoom calls or it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice, decent sized house, but it wasn't loud enough to, you know, to do stuff. So and I'm you're solitary again. I'm solitary. That's great. And Good. That kind of, you know, what I, sh what I should be doing. <laughs> Um, so I love this next question the best because your answer is so fun. Um, talk to me about how did you become an artist? Oh, yeah, that's because when I was, I, my mother always liked the arts and we lived in the suburbs and she, I don't know how she decided to do it. I can't remember that, but she went to artist studios. A lot of them were in Old Town. And she went there and she used to, she decided to um, take things on consignment and sell them from our home. It was also at the same time where the Art Institute used to have a rental gallery. Oh, we I've heard, rent you, I've things heard about that. We could uh, rent things from the Art Institute and, and then, um, you know, if you, if that money, the rental could go towards purchase. Right. So you could almost like rent to own a piece of art in your home. Right. It's kind of like playing on time or something. But yeah, so she did that. And then there was a lot of fine art in our house. And then I'd come home from school and I, these people would be in my house. <laughs> in house. And it was like, okay. But I think you develop an aesthetic that way. I and really, you were exposed to art starting at a really young age. And we always went to the Art Institute, and I love the Thorn Rooms, and I'm pretty sure that's why I work small. Oh, that's so fun. And you, you have siblings who then followed art careers, too. I have one sister. She, well, she went from teaching to graphic art. She, re, she reinvented herself and became a graphic artist. And the other one is just a really beautiful painter and artist and collage, and she does beautiful things. And, and her one, very, they, she just was a collector. She had money. <laughs> oh, she's like, I'm not going to get dirty. And then I also love that the way that you describe um, as an artist, because you, like you just said, you've been an artist your entire life. You visualize shapes and forms as like I'm always. Obsessed. I'm obsessed. I, it's hard for me to listen to some people because I'm always, I'm, I, things are kind of, because I'll see something and I'll just, yeah. And yeah. do you come home and sketch those ideas out? Like, will you go no. on a hike and no, no. They, they live if, up there? If they stay with me, I sketch them. And if they don't stay with me, they must not be important enough. Oh, I love that. Okay, then, so who are your inspirations? This question comes with an attachment, which we will share. We'll figure out how to share it. But I love how you dealt with this question. Who are your inspirations? <laughs> I, every time I see an artist, I see a little bit of me. I went, oh my gosh. I think when I was um, becoming more formative, I did make, um, and I used to teach in the high schools, I did make large art tools, like giant pe six foot pencils and chalks, and I made a huge watercolor set. And so that was kind of Oldenburgish, you know, mm -hmm. and then I, but it enabled me to learn how to use a wood shop, and it enabled me to learn so much stuff but they were too big, you know. I take I took some to a show in Michigan, and I had to like rent a trailer. You know? <laughs> so, and then it was just kind of crazy. So, and I'd set up insulation. So I still like that work. It was pivotal. It it really it did change my life. But um, then they kind of got shrunken down when I had my own place. I couldn't do that anymore. You know, this was using the Art Institute studio. So. Uh, I started be working a little smaller, and I, I do. I think it works. It, you know, it draws you into the space. If you can draw someone into the space, then you've done part of your job. Right, regardless of the size. If you can draw someone in, yeah, you can draw someone in. The, you know, the average time people spend in front of a piece of art is what two seconds or something when they're when right. they're walking in a museum. So I like you know if somebody can walk up and look, if somebody can see the collage in that piece. Yeah. You know, and want curious what it was and then walk up close I feel I've done my job even yeah. if they don't like it yeah even if their reaction is positive or negative it's captivating someone for longer than three seconds I feel like this about like we've done all this research with Evanston made about like how to get people to engage and then we look at the analytics and it's like people watch a video for 13 seconds I'm like oh my god 
But what I love is that we are just going to keep trying. And I really appreciate your willingness to jump on board and be part of the virtual show and just be an Evanston made cheerleader. So thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And you're, I really have to thank you for spearheading this entire project. It's fun. It's super, super fun. I hope you're having fun because I think I, at least, you know, it's a lot of work. And you at this point are a volunteer and other people that I'm willing to volunteer. It's just a good idea. It's community based. It's art based. It kind of fits my criteria. Nice. And it's like what's so interesting is um, people are really, really responding to it right now. Like there is this community building need that people are feeling because the world is on fire. And it's, yeah, I mean, who, I don't want to be too optimistic, but I think we are going in the right direction with what we're doing. Yeah, well, people are outside, they're walking more, and now you have art in the storefronts and maybe on installations on people's houses. I don't do that kind of thing, but it's, it's still, it's a delight to see. You know, I've, I've walked, I feel like I've watched every square inch of Evanston in the last <laughs> three months. <laughs> it's kind of fun walking into them. You know? Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for your time today. Totally appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.